So in today's video, we're gonna talk about my top six neighborhoods to buy and live in in Norfolk, Virginia in 2023, coming up. Hey, my name is Sam Sansalone and I'm a real estate agent in the Hampton Roads area. And that goes from Virginia Beach through Williamsburg and I do videos every week about living and moving to the area. I'm coming at this with a 2023 perspective where uh, house prices have increased. And so because of that, I'm looking for very specific types of opportunities in neighborhoods. Uh, and there are some specific spots that I think if you can find the right house, I think these are spots to target uh, for potential uh, future value and value preservation uh, as you move into uh, the next few years. So number one is Ghent Square. So I've talked a lot about Ghent itself and it's, Ghent is near downtown Norfolk and I'll show you on map of Norfolk. You see this large area. This is Norfolk, the northwestern section of the south side. Now Norfolk, downtown Norfolk is in the southwestern side of Norfolk and just east of that is Ghent. You've heard me talk a lot about Ghent. I love Ghent, the shops, uh, you know, the restaurants, uh, the mom and pop feel. You can walk from place to place up down Collie Avenue and Colonial Avenue. Well, just east of that in Ghent is this area called Ghent Square. Now, what's different between Ghent and Ghent Square? Well, technically, it kind of blends together, number one. But at the same time, Ghent Square has a lot of very specific things that the rest of Ghent doesn't necessarily have. Now, I'll drop a pin so you can see where Ghent Square is, what it feels like. Uh, Ghent Square has a mixture of attached houses in detached houses. Um, it's There's a wide range. And a lot of these were built in the 70s, in, in that kind of time period. You know, see there's a lot of green space. Great options there for green space. If you've got a dog, you're walking your dog, you're out just yourself, you wanna go out for exercise. Um, so there's access points there. You've got a lot of single family houses that are anywhere from like 25, 3,000 square feet to four, 5,000 square feet. You also have some spots that have attached houses, townhouses and condos that are anywhere from 1,000 square feet to 2,000 and even sometimes 3,000 square feet. So there's a, and you pretty much have any type of house in Ghent Square. And because of that, it attracts a lot of different types of people looking for different types of things. Uh, and so this is a little bit different than the rest of Ghent because the rest of Ghent is usually older. Like for example, 1910s, 20s and 30s houses, Ghent Square, mostly in the 70s. Uh, and so all this green space as well, if you look at Ghent itself, the rest of Ghent doesn't have nearly the same amount of green space as Ghent Square does. This area around, around Ghent Square, uh, Botetot Gardens right there, which is close to the center of Ghent Square. So that's a big benefit of being in Ghent. The biggest benefit to Ghent Square and as opposed to the rest of Ghent is the HO away, which for $80 a month, you get tennis courts, you get pickleball courts, uh, you get swimming pool, you get a community center, uh, parking spaces, assigned parking spaces, uh, as well as a, a, a playground, a lot you can get for 80 bucks a month uh, in uh, Ghent Square. Now, there are some spots in Ghent Square that have their condos that you can't have access to that, but they have a, their own condo association specifically, which is Ghent on the Square, which if you go over to just to the east, there is Ghent on the Square and there is its own pool and association and tennis courts there. So, but generally speaking, for the most part, if you're in Ghent Square, you're going to be getting the access to the HOA. So you're in Ghent, check number one. You're also very close to downtown Norfolk and also close to the heart of Ghent. Some great walking over towards the Hague, which is over near uh, this section near uh, the Elizabeth River. And also in like, you're right close to the Harrison Opera House. You're close to the um, uh, Chrysler Museum. And you're also getting close to downtown Norfolk. You can, technically could walk there probably in a matter of minutes. I used to do that myself when I lived in Ghent. Now, the condos and townhouses can be anywhere from like 200,000 for the small condos, even like on Ghent on the Square or in the, like the three, four, five hundred thousand dollar price range, up to even six for attached larger houses, like, like two, 2,500 and 3,000 square feet. But the detached, you're starting really in the sixes at the very beginning, mostly in the $700,000 price range, and it goes up into the nines and, and up uh, the larger the houses get. So you do have like a wide range of houses and also a wide range of prices. Now, there's some drawbacks to being here. Number one is the accessibility to the Norfolk Navy base, for example, or the bases in general. Where you are in relation to the rest of Norfolk is not super inconvenient to uh, 264, and, uh, which is over here near downtown Norfolk, which is the main interstate that gets you out of uh, Norfolk, 
but you're not super convenient either. So it's gonna, it's gonna take you about 10 minutes to get to the interstate. And then uh, from there, going into other parts of town, it can take you longer. So, you know, you're about 30 probably minutes away from uh, Norfolk Navy base, if uh, give or take, and about 35, 40 from Oceana Naval Air Station. Other drawback is part of this area, a lot of it can require flood insurance. So in Ghent Square, you're close to the Hague. The Hague can become an issue with flooding in, in many spots. I've done videos talking about flooding, and this is one of the, the hot points uh, of flooding in Norfolk is right close to this Hague area. And there are some spots that do require flood insurance in and around Ghent Square. And so just because you're paying for a house at 750 might mean you might be paying for flood insurance as well. They're not all like that, but just may definitely keep that in mind. And that's something that will be a theme as we talk through the rest of these neighborhoods. So that brings me to number two on the list, which is Pinewell. Pinewell, we're gonna go further north in the northern part of Norfolk, which is close to the very tip near the Chesapeake Bay. It is to me a good combination of you're near the ocean, you have access to the ocean, access to ocean view, uh, which is a, a probably the most affordable beach access in all of the area. But you also have a nice, a relaxed feel in a very secluded corner neighborhood right off of the, the main road. So you see here, this is the section we're talking about right around here, just south of East Ocean View and north of the Ocean View uh, golf course, drop in a pin. This is if you love beach access, but you like those old Cape style houses, uh, but you want quick access to the beach, this is heaven because the prices in here can be anywhere from $200,000 uh, or 250 now, I guess, up into the fours and fives. So the size of the houses are relatively small in some cases, two bedroom, mostly three bedroom and up, uh, and 1,100 square feet and up. But most of them are like 1,500 to 2,500 square feet. To be able to get access to the beach, have this nature and relaxed, comfortable feel, uh, and close to a golf course, uh, and close to the beach for the price is super hard to find. Uh, and some you can find too that there are other spots nearby that have similar houses, but not to the same scale of design of the streets and the neighborhood of them itself. And so you find the sidewalks are along uh, along Pinewell. You also have a lot of trees. If you see a house that comes up in Pinewell and it's in the 300, especially $300,000 price range, it's going really fast. So if you are looking for a house in here under five or under four, be ready to jump quickly. Road wise, you're close to Ocean View, which means you can get to the east side of Ocean View relatively easily on, on Route 60 Shore Drive, as well as you're close to Interstate 64, but super close to the Norfolk Navy Base and pretty close to the Little Creek Amphibious Base as well. So there's Norfolk Navy Base right here, there is Pinewell, and then there is the Little Creek Base. So you're, you're 10 minutes away from either of those. Uh, it. And also one of the biggest benefits that is kind of unspoken is that this area is in flood zone X, which means no flood insurance uh, in this area required. So going further south is our number three neighborhood, which is Talbot Park, which is in an area in the north kind of central area part of Norfolk, which I love, uh, that is just north of the Lafayette River. Now, this area is mostly built in the 50s and 60s. Uh, and the reason I like this area, one of the reasons is because this area doesn't have too much of an issue with flood insurance unless you're along the water. So this whole area, if you wanna be close to Ghent, close to the things near downtown Norfolk, but you don't wanna pay flood insurance and you wanna be kind of in a relaxed, kind of uh, uh, tucked away a neighborhood, I think this area is a great option for you. And the prices can be relatively uh, reasonable for what you're getting as well. So Talbot Park is on the east, or the west side of this peninsula. Talbot Park itself, drop a pin. You'll get a mixture of kind of the old feel, uh, also relaxed, very quiet, but you're also in a spot that's very, very convenient. And so same goes here. These prices are gonna be mostly in the fours to sixes. Uh, and one of the benefits here is, and you can get water access here are close to a million dollars, which uh, you know, again, it's not cheap, but if you want water access, this is one of the more affordable spots that also has larger houses uh, and the best chance of staying under a million if you want that deep water access along the Lafayette River, which can take you over to downtown Norfolk and that whole area there. So that's why I like Talbot Park. You're close to several uh, private schools, Norfolk Christian, Norfolk Collegiate, uh, or two that are literally across the street. Granby High School is right uh, in front of Talbot Park. And so if you don't want uh, the public public school, you can go do the uh, private office. You're close to Grammy Street, which takes you down in th right straight through downtown Norfolk, which is like 12 minutes away. And you're close to 64, which Interstate 64, which again, takes you close to Norfolk Navy Base. Also takes you into Virginia Beach very easily and 264. So you're about 20 minutes away from a lot of Virginia Beach, 20 to 22 minutes or so. So Talbot Park has good value. It has great styles of houses, well-built houses.
houses. Uh, and if you can get a house cheaper, like a house that, may, that might need a lot of work, uh, you can get a house quickly that someone's ready to let go of, uh, you can take advantage of that and get some good value and good equity in Talbot Park. So now we're gonna go further east uh, in Norfolk and go to a smaller and more affordable, if you're looking for a lower price point neighborhood that is on the eastern northeastern side uh, of Norfolk, back closer to Ocean View, which is Bel Air. Bel Air is right off of, if you see uh, Chesapeake Boulevard to the west and also Little Creek Road to the south, just north of there is this little tucked away corner here uh, that is, I mean, you. you know, I'll, I'll drop a pin on Little Creek first. You'll see a Little Creek. It's a very kind of commercial, very old 60s feel. Not a lot of new stuff going on uh, uh, in uh, Little Creek in that area. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a, it's a spot you should avoid. It's just kind of gives you context of what the area feels like once you get out of the neighborhood. But if you drop a pin in the neighborhood, very relaxed, very quiet, it is very it has a lot of trees um, and the lot sizes are large so if you want the most for your money but you also want a larger house or i'm sorry a larger lot size uh, but you also want a house that's well built uh, has you know kind of a functional floor plan bel air does have a lot of options for that now this is not fancy you're not paying five hundred thousand dollars for these houses these houses are anywhere from like the the upper twos and mostly in the three hundred thousands price range which for being in that type of neighborhood uh is i think pretty affordable and pretty great i mean it's again it's hard to find this type of neighborhood for this price you'll see some in the fours you know but again you see notice just notice how quiet this area looks and how uh how shaded the area is uh and now that does lead to some drawbacks which obviously down tree lines and all that kind of stuff a lot of ranch style in here so if you want ranches there are some like split level, some two story, but if you want a lot of ranches, like that sprawled out uh, feel, this would be a good option as well. Now, if you want two story, this might not be as good of an option. And I would say, if you want to be in the 300,000 price range, I might pivot to some spots with Cape Cod style houses because those often have uh, more, uh, ac uh, more opportunities for that, that same price point, but also having two stories, if that makes sense. Looking on the map, you'll see also that, uh, you know, Bel Air is not in a very convenient part of town, which I would say it's because you're driving from Chesapeake Avenue or Little Creek over to Route 60, for example, over to, over to 64. It's not inconvenient. It's just, you know, as you get out of Norfolk, sometimes you'll find that these this area can get some traffic, especially as you get onto the exits, exit ramps on the 64. So you're kind of right in the middle of a, a spot in 64 that can back up a lot, especially during rush hour. So that's one of the drawbacks. Another, another benefit though is it has no flood insurance required at this point. So flood zone X, if you have flood zone X, don't need flood insurance. And another thing about this area is Little Creek has functional shopping. You're near Walmart, you're near Aldi, which is right outside of Bel Air. But in addition to that, there's like the mom and pop shops, uh, uh, pharmacies, but not a lot of big shopping unless you get over into like the Norfolk outlet, which is further south and east, uh, closer to Ikea. Uh, and there aren't, like I mentioned in other videos about Norfolk, there aren't a lot of great shopping or grocery stores uh, in Norfolk, in my opinion, unless you get over into, for example, closer to Ghent, Fresh Market, Harris Teeter over there. Uh, and, and there are a couple of Walmarts that are close to Bel Air and close to this side of town, but it's just not as much of, of grocery shopping access uh, in this general area. So now the number five neighborhood, we're gonna go back closer to Ghent, which I think this is a neighborhood that's a bit, a bit fun. Uh, and it's relatively close to a lot of stuff in the center of Norfolk, which is Colonial place now colonial place i'll show you in the map it is just west of granby street but uh it is a pretty large neighborhood like size wise as far as the amount of streets and houses that there are in, in the neighborhood uh but it is i'd say about eight minutes or so away from ghent and about the same about eight to ten minutes away from downtown norfolk this neighborhood is loaded with a lot of colonial style or craftsman style houses uh in this neighborhood so it is hidden in the corner of norfolk it's like a peninsula backed up to the Lafayette River. Uh, that's a benefit because you, you only feel like you go into Colonial Place when you uh, actually live there, for example, or you want to walk around the water near the Lafayette River, which is a very cool setting. Uh, now, these houses can be anywhere from the mid 200s for lower ones, three bedroom, one and a half baths, uh, up into the fives and sixes on the water, which is a benefit to being in Colonial Place is that if you want water views, not water necessarily access uh, most of the time, if you want water views, you can see across the Lafayette River from, for example, Mayflower Road and get a house in the 550, 650 range. I'll drop a pin. Uh, and this is all Lafayette River. And then facing uh, the other side, there's there are houses that overlook the water. 
So the setting's great. The house sizes are great, again, along the water. You'll see some that are over 3,000 plus. They're decent sized houses. Uh, but if you go off the water, uh, now you're talking, they can be anywhere from 1,200 square feet to 25 and, and up square foot. But uh, they're, pri they're cheaper prices off the water, you know, 400s, uh, 300s. Uh, so one of the benefits, I think, of Colonial Place in this market is that a lot of these houses are older, right? And if they're not fully renovated already and you know maintained extremely well, you might be able to find someone who uh, has a house that might need a lot of work or some work. And we're in the market right now where the perception can be uh, the seller might think that they might not get any offers. And so they might be willing to take a much reduced price uh, if the house that they have has been sitting for a while. Uh, and then you can sneak in there and get a house that might not need as much, but the perception of the house and what it might need might make the value of the house perceived to be lower. And you can get in there and get some good value and equity. Now, one of the drawbacks, I mentioned flooding a lot of times in other house, neighborhoods, but here it's significant in very specific spots. Uh, if you look on the floodplains, you'll see that there's almost a ring around the neighborhood and that exterior ring uh, is a, are spots that have the most propensity for flood insurance, uh, like on the eastern and northern and, and uh, western sides, especially over towards Llewellyn Avenue. These areas over here, there are some spots that can, can cause a problem uh, in very specific times of the day, uh, sometimes even if it doesn't rain. Uh, so it's more about the wind direction and where the water flows to. So just got to be very aware of that and do some research before you make decisions on where you're looking in Colonial Place. And that will affect obviously not just, just the, the idea of flooding, but also the potential payments with the flood insurance. And also you're just east of Colley Avenue, which right here, go up Colley Avenue. There are some spots, some great restaurants, like Grand Kitchen. Uh, Hanks Fling Station is one that I like a lot. Now on the east side of, of Colley is the uh, Dirty Buffalo is another one. Uh, the Starving Artist Cafe is over there near the water. Reaver Beach Brewing is near here too. So, so a lot of uh, restaurants, uh, very easy access from Colonial Place, just one street over on 38th Street or any of those, these uh, side roads. Uh, I think it's one of the best in this section of Norfolk, especially for the price. So now number six on our list is one that I, I think is undervalued and I think will continue to be undervalued as the area continues to develop is Ocean View. Or, and I've talked about Pinewell earlier, which is just off of Ocean View but Ocean View is a huge part of town and it can have a very negative connotation uh, based on historical experiences. So people that have grown up in the area, a lot of people love Ocean View. A lot of people don't like Ocean View. That's part of why it's cheaper. It has an extremely wide mixture of types of houses. You can get two bedroom bungalows, like 800 square feet for 200,000 or less. You can also get $200,000 condos that line anywhere along the, the beach. In, well, I say a line. There are a lot of spots that have them, especially on the west side uh, near Willoughby Spit. Uh, but you can also get single family houses that are off the ocean out around Ocean View for like 300,000, 400,000, like three bedroom, four bedroom, five bedroom houses for 450, 500,000. Like it's a great value for the access to the beach, right? But in addition to that, you've got the actual ocean itself. And so I'm going to do the, the satellite view. This is all ocean. Uh, ocean access and there are multiple access points along ocean view from the wa from uh the the main road uh, and so if you live on the ocean side you're right there you can walk to the beach or you're on the actual beach you see this is all beach access right look at this and you also have if you're coming off the water like if you're off of the the ocean and cross uh shore drive or, or ocean view avenue excuse me you can get access to the beach as well uh, but you still have to walk across that busy street not ideal or convenient but again for the price it's pretty cool uh, and now, in addition to that, you see that there are different types of houses constructed in this area. There are there are condos, there are single family houses, there are uh, attached, like townhouse style. There are a lot of different types of houses. And because of that, you got a lot of different types of prices. But ocean view access from, to the water, you can get houses on the water side for the sixes and sevens, which is unheard of anywhere else in not just Norfolk, but a lot of places mostly in the Hampton Roads area. So if you want beach access in Norfolk, but you want to keep your prices lower, you can get a good house right close to the water for the sixes and sevens, uh, sevens price range. If you drop a pin just south of Ocean View Avenue, like say, let's just say, we're gonna go over to, let's just say Pleasant Avenue right here. So, so you'll see a, a wide range of vibes as well. So you see it's real close together. There's some houses that are very close. Like these houses can be like probably 300, you know, 325, 250, 375. Um, but then you're also close to apartment complexes. You're close to some green space. This is what brings the neighborhood to feel the way it is, which brings cheaper prices sometimes, but also brings opportunity for growth and development. So as time has gone by, 
Houses have gotten rebuilt, gotten developed, gotten renovated. There's a wide range of types of areas in Ocean View. That's where the value is and where you can find those spots, where to find those pockets of places that you can get a house that maybe you can get it for 225 or 450, but you can renovate it and sell it for a lot more or keep it and get some good equity. That's where you find some good value. And that's why I like the idea of getting in a house in Ocean View right now. Now, so there's some drawbacks. One big drawback, I mentioned flood insurance. This is Little Creek right here. Little Creek can flood a lot, especially along the shoreline, depending on which direction the wind blows, where the water on uh, the wind blows. So check your flood insurance. Make sure if you're getting a house in this area that you're accounting for that flood insurance, depending on where you are in Ocean View. Now that's one of the draw drawbacks. Other drawback is that Ocean View is a very long road, Ocean View Avenue. And so if you live on Ocean View, you think, oh, well, I'm near or close to a main road. I can just hop over there and get to the to the to the um, the main the interstates. Not so fast. <laughs> if you're in the middle of Ocean View, like close to Bold Mariner, which is a great brewery that is relatively new too. If you get near Bold Mariner, for example, getting over to 64, it's going to take you like seven, eight minutes to get there, much less getting from there to the rest of town. So if you're close to Norfolk Navy Base, that's a benefit. Also close to Little Creek Amphibious Base. But if you're like going to uh, Oceana, for example, it's going to take you like probably 40 minutes to get there because you're just tucked away in that corner. Good restaurants, though. I mentioned Bold Mariner. And I also say Jesse's Taqueria is great. There are a few locations in the area. The owner's fantastic. Where is it? Where's Jesse's? There's Jesse's right there. And there's some also some good locations closer to Shore Drive, which is what the Ocean View Avenue turns into. Uh, AJ Gators is over there. You've got Cova Brewing, which is over. It's a great coffee spot on the corner of Shore Drive and Pretty Lake, Pretty Lake Avenue. Uh, so this area over here close to East, East Beach is being developed a lot. And that leads me to one thing that I think is worth mentioning is that there are a lot of new construction options here for relatively affordable prices in the fours and the fives. Uh, in Ocean View. So if you want newer, this is the spot I'd look for if you can. There are places where builders are building uh, houses on like vacant lots, like individual lots in the middle of the neighborhood. Uh, I'll show you an example. I'll just drop a pin and see if I can find one. I'm sure we can. There we go. These were relatively new houses and it was just either older houses that were torn down or vacant lots. And so you see here that older house right there. You get that newer house down the street. That's the, that's kind of the staple feel of Ocean View. But if you want newer houses, this is the place to find it for the cheapest price. There is one right there being built up right across the street from an older house. That's that's what, that's what I'm talking about. But as this happens, it's happening on a larger scale. And so I think that that is furthering the development and the feel of Ocean View. So if you have any other questions about living or moving to Norfolk or the Hampton Roads area, this is what I do. I love doing this and talking about Hampton Roads in Norfolk, Virginia Beach, Williamsburg. And you wanna relocate here, please let me know. I've got my contact information in the description. You can reach out to me at any point and I will do whatever I can to help you relocate to the area. And I will see you on the next video.